Here's uh, me and Brian. We're at Dundurn Castle, Hamilton, Ontario, and uh, there's a there's a ghost walk going on. So we're meeting some family members. We're going on a ghost walk. For more information about the ghost walks of Dundurn Castle, please head on over to ghostwalks.com, and you can find a whole bunch of information on the stuff that you're looking for. And they do uh, not just Dundurn; they do a bunch of other different ghost walks. So definitely go check it out. I highly recommend it. And this was an awesome time. I think down there is where the, the, the ghosts are. Please say hi to our fearless driver, Jimmy. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a decent evening going through the city tonight. Not too much traffic. Uh, no major problems. So we should be able to stay on time for this tour. <laughs> so as I mentioned, we'll go through a talk. And this is very interesting to the history of Canada because back in the 1850s, Canada was looking to get its very first city-run cemetery. And for some reason, Hamilton was obsessed with getting this record. So we opened up this field here where the cemetery is today. We put a sign in front of it and we told Canada, hey, look, the beautiful custom house there has an interesting history to it, which leads to its interesting ghosts. Uh, it started out as a custom house for 20 years. After that, it was a school. After that, it was the first YWCA in the city's history. After that, it was a social services agency, which was also known as an abandoned building with an open front door. Uh, no supervision, and during that time, tons of violence occurred inside the building. And by the 1980s, everybody just assumed they were gonna tear it down. But thanks for us, a savior came in and saved the building. And you know who saved it? A karate dojo. <laughs> Cobra Kai fans? Even if it isn't. So let's do this. You really lied to her face. Woman in Black. This was written in 1873 by Alexander Wingfield. Yes, from Hamilton. He worked in the customs department. The ghosts long ago used to dress in pure white. But now they've gone on a different track. For the Hamilton ghost seems to take a delight to stroll around the city in black. Pat Duffy, who saw her in Corktown last night, has been here telling his friend that she stood seven feet and nine inches in height and wore a large Grecian bed. A peeler who saw her turn blue with a fright and in terror he clung to a post. His hair, once a carroty red, had turned white since he locked on the ghost. Her breath seemed as hot as a furnace. Besides, it smelled strongly of sulfur and gin. Two horns a, large, a yard long stuck straight out of her head, and her hooves make a great clatter. And you, you can see why she's upset. Right? Understand? Her air was majestic and grand as she passed muffled up in a veil. A bottle of ruin she held in each hand. She uttered a low plaintive wail. I have mixed in the world with spirits and men. Once more with the spirits I'll go. She stopped took a sniff of the ruin and popped into a cellar below. He could hear her again crying out from her den, tonight you will see me no more, but I'll meet you Saturday evening at 10 by the fountain that stands in the gore. Beautiful poem, right? They were kept inside that building. We don't really know of any ghost stories inside there because when you look at the history, right, it was a government hospital for many, many years, and then after that it was abandoned for the past 40 years and not a lot of opportunities to come up with experiences. However, you think back to the time of the original security guards, back before we had automated security systems, those guards had to watch the grounds, but they also had to go in the building, and they also had to go into the original tunnel system that once existed under these grounds, connected all the old buildings. I know for sure that they existed too because uh, when I was in high school, I spent some time in the uh, psychiatric hospital. I'm oh, sorry, I, was, I did a co-op. It was a co-op, guys. You believe me, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I, I, I was the only one who was willing to go do the photo, there was only one photocopier and it was in the basement. And you had to walk through the tunnel to get to it, so I got to experience those tunnels personally. But anyway, a uh, security guard was in one of the tunnels that he originally led to Century Manor. As he's walking through, he said he heard voices in the distance, and he immediately assumes it's uh, trespassers because it happened before. He comes around the corner, and at the end of the hall is a closed door. The voices are from the other side, and as he gets close to the door, it's then silent. 
They just assumed they heard him approaching, so now they're quiet and hiding. And he grabs the door handle and he thinks, wait a minute, they've caused me all these problems over the years. You know what? I'm gonna give them the biggest jump scare of their life. And he thinks he's like all prepared to do this, so excited, he counts one, two, three, turns the knob, swings open the door, and he's the one who gets the jump scare. Because what he expected to see never happened. Instead, the kid's running around all scared, what does he see instead? Three shadowed silhouettes sitting at a table. Then he looks at them, they're staring back at him. Uh, one of the shadows leaned in towards the other and he heard a whisper in the darkness which said, See, I told you he would find us. So this building dates back to the late 1800s. And all of the techniques of mental health that you've heard of or seen in the movies, like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, uh, happened inside this building. You would have uh, lobotomies and electroshock therapy. And whether they're going to save the building or not, it's up for debate. Uh, structures falling apart, there's asbestos inside the walls, they haven't touched it since. So my guess is that they're just waiting for it to fall down so they have an excuse to clear the land. We're about to drive through on our way back to Dunter Castle. Now I'm going to do uh, some quick uh, point out some quick history and ghosts as we drive through the court. And the first one's coming up here on the right. It will be lit up from the back. It's a building. <laughs> hey, Uncle Mark, Uncle Mark. Yep. I mean, Mark. This is what I did to my dad. Open the box, open the box. There's a kitty inside. <laughs> Psych, cat, a daddy. So Alan McNabb's home, Dundon Castle. I've never been in here. Are you filming this right now? Oh. <laughs> Can I see ghosts? Hi. For just one moment. So Sophia says, I went into dear Mama's room, but I did not kiss her. She seemed to be so tired. I went out into the hall and was waiting for Minnie, her sister, uh, when she came out and said, Mama's gone. I rushed into the room and soon perceived the awful change which was about to take place. This was about half past eight and by nine, poor dear mama was no more. She did not struggle longer than 10 minutes and died almost as if she were going to sleep. When dearest mama first got into bed, they went to cover her and she said, leave me a little. They both sat at her bedside and after a little pause, dear mama said something but neither of them could hear it. They now think she said, it's death. When Papa came into the room, she cast her eyes at him, and it was the last look she took. Poor dear, dear Mama. I remember a piece of poetry that she wrote in her scrapbook. It went, we, we near know what we have until we lose it. What shall we do without her? We have lost a good and kind friend we can never replace. I can write no more. Yeah, that's a spooky. Oh yeah, this room has no fair but oh. This feels like just demon possession. This is evil. a demon. Like, like I would have swore there was no light on it here, but there is. Yeah. It's so dark and it's like there's no light, but there is a light. Yeah, there's some light on this side. Yeah, this is that him? I guess that's the guy. The. I think those would just They're be like Scottish. Ooh, a couple of There's Caesar up there. Yeah. That, that pan and bucket over there on the, cor on the, on the corner? Yeah, yeah. That was the bathroom. That was So, no, they would have had gas lighting. So, if they had gasoliers all throughout the house, uh, but no, no gas lighting. What about the washroom? Sorry. Sorry. So they had flushing toilets, which is a very unusual thing for a Victorian home to have. Uh, there's two flushing toilets in this house, uh, and so 
McNabb installed this technology in around 1842 and sorry 1847 and he had cisterns built underneath the castle that collected rainwater and then a pump that sent it up to the roof a reservoir and roof and then it was just gravity that brought that brought the yeah uh, and that That's right, you have the uh, coals. Look at Noel. Noel, where are you? Okay, there's the thing, look at where you ding the bell when you want something. Well, just downstairs, there's a whole row of bells. Some ghosts in here. That's like the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that design. <laughs> yeah. This is where uh, people take a shite. That's where you have a good shite. See, it's just like you fill it up with water. Did it? So weird. I thought there was somebody. So I thought Brian was behind me. Yeah, that's cool.
Hello. Any any ghosts? Ghosts? If you're in here, don't come near me. If you believe you've seen a ghost within this video, please comment below and let me know. And also be sure to check out ghostwalks.com. If you have any footage of ghosts or any sightings or any EVPs at Dundurn Castle, please visit their website and post it to them and you may be lucky enough to have your stuff posted on their social media channels. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs>